In this video, we are going to demonstrate the arthroscopic decompression of popliteal cyst. Here is a 50 year old lady with osteoarthritis of the left knee and a large Baker cyst in the popliteal fossa. There is a horizontal tear of medial meniscus. The communication between the capsule and the popliteal cyst is quite visible on axial sections. One key point of this operation is making of the posterior middle portal, which is made just posterior and inferior to the medial epicondyle. The posterior middle corner of the knee joint has four distinct synovial folds, and one has to identify these folds. That is the safe area where PM portal can be made. The joint is entered through the standard anterolateral portal and to enter the posterior middle compartment, the window between the middle femoral condyle and the PCL is utilized and the knee is kept about 50 to 60 degrees of knee flexion which relaxes the PCL and one can easily enter the posterior middle compartment. Once in the posterior middle compartment, the synovial folds are identified The soft spot is palpated and an outside in technique is used to create the posterior middle portal. Now coming back to the index case, we see a lot of degenerative changes on the femoral condyle and at the same time there is complex meniscal tear in the posterior horn of middle meniscus. One of the theories behind the formation of popliteal cyst is the overproduction of synovial fluid due to intraarticular pathology and arthroscopic assessment and treatment gives us the opportunity to take care of this intraarticular pathology. Partial medial manisectomy has been done and chondral flaps have been trimmed using a motorized shaver. The posterior middle compartment is entered through the interval between the PCL and the middle femoral condyle, and again the synovial folds are identified. The key point in dealing with Baker cyst decompression is to identify the orifice of Baker cyst which is usually covered with a synovial fold and, you, and with the help of a probe we can see that posterior and medial to the gastrocnemius fold there is a transverse scapular fold which covers the orifice of the Baker cyst and while the orifice is being palpated, one can go into the Baker cyst through this window and if you press onto the Baker cyst externally, there is a gush of gelatinous material into the synovial, in, into the joint and the Baker cyst can be decompressed. The next step in the management of Baker cyst is to enlarge the one-way opening of the capsule and to make it a big opening so that there is a bidirectional flow of synovial fluid. And another hypothesis that is put forth is the healing of big opening in due course will take care of the recurrence. A basket punch and a motorized shaver can be used alternately to enlarge the opening. It is very important to mention here that 
while using motorized shaver in the posterior compartment. The suction should be very low, otherwise you can damage the neurovascular structures in the posterior compartment. Once the opening is large enough, one can enter into the popliteal cyst directly and inspect the septi and the cyst wall. In case one finds there are multi-loculated or multi-lobulated cyst, the, the, the septi can be divided by using a cystic portal directly, although that is not very often required. Through the opening, one can often see the middle head of gastrocnemius tender as the cyst wall is usually posterior and medial to the middle head of gastrocnemius. The motorized shaver is inserted into the popliteal cyst and the cyst wall is gradually and gently abraded taking care not to use vigorous suction because that can cause inadvertent damage to the neurovascular structures in the posterior knee compartment. 